Hi everyone, welcome to the video. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about the short leg on your put credit spread being assigned and how to deal with it. Let's go. Hi everybody, welcome again to the video. Today we're talking about your short leg being assigned as part of your put credit spread. So maybe last night you received a nice little email from your broker that said, hey, you've been assigned on your short put out of your put credit spread. Now what? So let's say three weeks prior, we decided to come in here onto the index on the, uh, the diamonds and we decided to put on a little put credit spread. Now we thought that this uh, index was gonna go sideways or up, so we came in here to our options chain and we sold that 340 put option right there. Now to protect ourselves, we came down here to that 335 and we bought that 335 put for protection. Now, we know that when we sell a credit spread to open a trade, we're going to receive a credit. So in this case, let's say we sold this trade for $2 in credit. Now, to figure out the max loss, we take the width of the spread, which is a $5 wide spread, and we deduct the $2 that we received in credit. So our max loss would be $3. So we take the width of that spread minus the credit that we received so in this case, again, our max loss would be $3. Let's talk about this little guy right here. Yeah, this little 340 put option. What do we do with that? And what does that obligate us to do? So let's take a look at that 340 put option. All right, that 340 put option obligates you to buy stock at $340 if assigned. Now I say if assigned because just because our option goes in the money does not mean that we're going to be assigned. Now, so many people think that, you know, just because my option goes in the money by maybe five cents, 10 cents, or a dollar, that I'm gonna be assigned, that's simply not true. So there's many factors that uh, go into play when somebody decides to exercise their option. So that, that should ease your mind right there just a little bit. So just to look at it visually on a chart, you can see our 340 put option there that we uh, sold, and then our 335 put option that we bought there for protection. We're expecting this trade to go sideways or up. And as long as we're above that 340 put option at expiration, we're gonna continue to hold on to that $2 that we received in credit. But if we drop down below that 335 at expiration, we're gonna take our max loss of $3 in this case. So that 340 short put, again, that obligates you to buy 100 shares per contract at $340 if assigned. So just to give you a visual look at what this trade looks like as it's playing out. You can see again our 340 and 335 puts there. And as it trades along, we're you know losing theta, time is, is uh, working in our favor. And you can see that you know probably about right in here, we could have got out of this trade for a nice profit. You know, we sold this trade for $2, we could buy it back for $1. You know, we're getting out of these trades about 50% of the max profit. But for whatever reason, whatever reason, we didn't do it. So as the trade marches on, it continues to go down. And right here, we're like going, oh my gosh, we're getting close to expiration. And boom, we got assigned on our contract right there. You can see we're below that 340 put, but we're still above that 335 put. So what do we do in this case? What do we do in this case? So we were assigned on that 340 put option, right? So you're now long 100 shares per contract in your account. In other words, the shares were put to you and they were put to your account at $340. But what does that do to our profit and loss diagram or our risk profile here? So again, we're long 100 shares in our account and that 340 put option contract is now gone. It's vanished from our account. It's now turned into stock and we have basically a synthetic long call position. Now, if you're familiar with the risk profile of a long call option, what it looks like here is that we bought the 335 uh, call and we paid a $3 debit for it, right? So you can see here, it looks just like a long call option. It acts like a long call option, but we call it a synthetic long call option because it's done with a long put and long stock. So this is what it looks like here. So just to think about it, kind of wrap your mind around it here. You know, you bought the stock at $340 or it was put to us at $340. But we own the right, we still own the right with that 335 put, we still own the right to sell that stock at $335. So 
if you bought it at 340 and you can sell it at 335, that's still a $5 loss, but we were already paid $2. So, you know, nothing's really changed here other than that we own the stock. And one other thing that you can notice here is that our risk profile is now uh, unlimited to the upside because we are long those 100 shares of stock. So as long as that stock goes up, we make the money and we're not capped off at that 340 anymore. So to hold these shares, it would cost you uh, $34,000. Now, if you're in a margin account, which you would be if you're trading these types of options, um, your broker will allow you to borrow some of that money on margin. But in order to hold these shares, you're gonna have to have some money in your account. So let's just take a look at it here on a risk profile uh, on the Thinkorswim trading platform. Again, you can see that there's our 100 shares right there, our long 100 shares, and then there's that 335 put. And so when you put it out here on a profit and loss diagram or a risk profile in Think or Swim, it looks just like a long call option. And I just wanted to show you guys that just to see what it looks like in the platform there. So again, if you had a larger account and you still had a bullish bias, you could hold the stock and let the trade play out. Now, I know we're talking about a large stock here at $340. Uh, but if you were talking about a smaller stock, maybe a $20 stock, you might only have to have $2,000 in your account in order to hold this trade. So if you still felt bullish on this play, you could just hold that stock in your account and you know you, you might even get a, a big move to the upside and be able to capitalize on all that move to the upside. So in this case, um, you would need the stock to rise to 338 to break even. Now that's nothing different um, from where we were on our put credit spread, we'd still have to be above 338. But the difference is that we own the stock now instead of being short that 340 put option. So, and now we have, you know, owning the stock, we have that unlimited potential to the upside. But here's the million dollar question. I know everybody's wondering, and this is what this video is all about is, well, what if I don't have the money in my account to hold on to that stock? What is going to happen? Well, what's gonna happen is, if you don't have the money in your account, you're gonna get a margin call. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, a margin call. I don't wanna get a margin call from my broker. Uh, everybody's worried about that margin call. You hear about margin call Mondays and there's the closing bell. Uh, you hear about margin call Mondays and everything like that. And it just kind of strikes fear in new traders just to get that margin call. So what is a margin call? A margin call refers specifically to a broker's demand that an investor or a trader deposit additional funds into their account so that it's brought up to the minimum value known as the maintenance margin. So go figure, right? If you get assigned stock and you got stock in your account, and in our example, we got 100 shares of stock put in our account and we don't have the money in there, the broker is gonna say, hey, Mr. Trader, you need to put some money in your account because there's not enough money in there to cover the cost of this stock. So what can you do? Well, don't panic, number one, don't panic. Everybody panics. They get the margin call or they get a sign. Don't panic, guys. Remember, we still have that 335 put there that gives us the right to sell stock at 335. So even if we were assigned a 340, we know that we have that 335 put there that allows us to sell the stock at 335. We already received the $2, so our max loss in this trade is $3, right? So one option that you could do is add funds to your account. We've already talked about that. If you still believe in the position or if you wanna own the stock, just add funds to your account. Another option is to reverse the trade. And I'm, I'm sure that this is what everybody's gonna to wanna to do. So in other words, sell the long shares of stock back on the open market and at the same time, sell your 335 protected put option at the same time. So this can be done in one transaction called a covered stock order. So I'm gonna tell you guys, I can guarantee you that many traders right now are gonna be like, well, if I, if I sold the 340 and I got a sign on that, I'm just gonna exercise my 335 put option. Why would you wanna do that, guys? Why? Why? Don't do it. I'm telling you, don't do it, guys. So let's just look at it here and I'm gonna tell you why. So we're looking at that 335 put option. That 335 put option has $2.98 of value left in it. And that is extrinsic value. Now, when you exercise a put option, uh, when you exercise an, uh, any option, the extrinsic value, all that extrinsic value, which you can see right here is $2.98 or $298. All that extrinsic value gets wiped 
away. So you get assigned that 335, that extrinsic value is gone. Here's another thing, and, and this, is what, uh, this is what I wanna point out too. So if you exercise this, this 335 put right here, look what the stock is trading at. Whoops, that's, uh, that's kind of, the stock is trading at 335.70. So why would you want to sell a stock at 335 when you could sell it for 335.70? So, you know, we don't wanna just automatically just go out and start exercising options um, without really thinking about what we're doing as we're, as we're doing that. So there's a better way, guys. Instead of losing all that extrinsic value by exercising your option, just sell the option. And this can be done by in one order called a covered stock order. All right, so here we are in the Thinkorswim trading platform. We're looking at the, uh, the options that we have here, we got that 335 put, and there's our long stock. And uh, you can see that these numbers are not quite exactly right because I had to do it in the on-demand account to make this, uh, to make this work. So uh, in order to close this trade, we're just gonna take the 335 put, and we're gonna hit the shift key and then click on the 335 put. And at the same time, we're gonna click on that long stock and we're gonna sell one covered. Now that's one covered stock order. And you can see that it pulls it up here together and there's our, there's our uh, one put option and then there's our 100 shares of stock. Now we're gonna come over here and we can see that this is a covered stock order. And once we hit the confirm send, you can see that right there on the cost of the trade, it's in parentheses, that means it's gonna be a credit back to us. So again, remember when we bought stock, uh, we had money went out of our account, but when we sell it back to the market, we're gonna receive a credit. So you're gonna be able to capture all that extrinsic value and you're not gonna lose that by going out and just exercising that 335 put option. So let's talk about some key takeaways, guys, some key takeaways here. So number one, don't panic. Don't panic, guys, don't do it, don't do it. So you could add funds to your account if you still have the same bias or you can just sell the stock and the put option in one order. So guys, Never, never exercise, exercise an option, option again. again. Just don't do it, guys. You're gonna lose all that extrinsic value. Now, I don't wanna say don't ever exercise an option. I'm just saying as part of this put credit spread or as part of getting out of a put credit spread, it's not necessary to exercise that option in order to offset the, the short put that was assigned or the short call that was assigned in the form of a uh, short call spread. Just think about what you're doing before you start exercising an option. In, in many cases, you don't need to. So something to think about here, all right? So if you were assigned and you plan to use your protective put, in this case, that 335 put option, you will need to close your trade before option expiration. Why is that? Well, you wanna trade it, you wanna close that before because after expiration, you'll no longer have that option to sell the stock at your protective put strike. It will have expired. All right, you guys, I hope this video has been helpful in helping you understand about options assignment. Now, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, when you're selling options, and it's nothing to be worried about. But if you'd like to learn more about options assignment, make sure you click this link right up here in the top right-hand corner because I go into more detail about options assignment. Also, if you'd like a copy of my free ebook, check the description below. You can download a free copy of that ebook. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If this video has been helpful, make sure you give it a like. And if you like more content like this, make sure you subscribe. Have a good one, everybody.